Coming to you from Byram, Mississippi, is a church where every member matters. It's Lakeshore Church, and we are so glad for you to join us this morning. The message comes from Senior Pastor Jay Frazier as he shares from God's Word. Our goal is that everyone find a place to serve God in and outside the church. We worship and celebrate our relationship with God and strive to bring others to the cross of salvation. And now we join Pastor Jay Frazier. Did you know that in Matthew 18, 20, it says where two or more are gathered together in His name, that He would be in the midst? That's really the reason we're here with you today. Because I'm here and you're here. That's the minimum of the scripture. And it says God's going to use this. And I believe today that God has ordained this time in His sovereignty for you to hear the Word of God. And we're excited about being a part of it. So enjoy today. Colossians chapter number 3. We're going to read verses 12 through 17. I will tell you that the, the, this entire chapter that Paul wrote to a church is about the Christian life. And after you accept Christ, it's, it's great reading about the kind of life we're supposed to live, uh, both individually and then it gets into family in the last part of the chapter. But we just want to read verses 12 through 17. Everything is balanced. Therefore, God, God's chosen ones, holy and loved, put on heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, accepting one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, put on love, the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of the Messiah to which you were called in one body control your hearts. Be thankful. Let the message about the Messiah dwell rich, richly among you, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom and singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Notice this verse. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in these minutes. We thank you, God, that you have created a, a, a life for us where we can be and have an accomplished balance in our life. I pray, God, ultimately that today would, your, my words would be yours. I pray, God, my thoughts would be yours. We would go exactly the direction that you have for us to go and, and this time. And most of all, Lord, each one of us, including myself, would walk in obedience to what we hear and what we know. And God would be careful to give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you. It was like yesterday. It's amazing how fast time goes by. I wasn't really that into the Olympics until 1984 came along. I must just be sensual and sexual for you just for a minute, but when Mary Lou Retton came on the stage in 1984, I was hooked for the very first time in gymnastics, I must confess. When I saw that young lady, quite honestly, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and told me that I was in love for the very first time. <laughs> to see what that young lady could do on a balance beam and on a gymnast floor was amazing. That seems like yesterday, and it was over 30 years ago. I was in love, but I'll tell you this, all the guys that I knew were in love with her too. There was a long line of guys that just thought she was it. I was amazed at some young lady that looked like she was no more than four foot tall. I'm sure she was a little taller than that, but how much balance she had and what and grace that she had and everything that she did. Balance is our subject today. Just a few weeks ago, I left Byram, downtown Byram. It wasn't sleeting on my car. It just looked like they had said it was going to, but I didn't know it was going to be at my house the way it was. Undoubtedly, it had been sleeting at my house for close to an hour before. When I got about a quarter of a mile from my house, is a pretty good curve. And when I ran around the curve, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't going that fast, but I was going fast enough that the back side of my car almost got ahead of the front part of it. And I don't know about you, if you like that kind of thing, then you can pray through today. You know, there's, there's, there's grace for you. But I don't like that feeling. When the back of the car gets even with the front of the car, it's just not a good feeling at all. My day, we call that fish tailing. I actually looked that up. And I've, if you know why we've come up with fish tailing, I'd like to know it after church. Not right now, but later on. But fish tailing. It's amazing that when the car began to do that, there was no longer balance to the car. It, it was no longer, there was, didn't seem to be much control. And that, that's a reminder. 
And then I thought about time. It's still going on now. For over 75 years, the Walinda family, better known as the Flying Walindas, have literally walked tightropes all across the world. Chasms, building to building, places of danger, circuses and the like, up on towers. Some have fallen to their death, but what they're known for is they walk a tightrope and they're balanced with no safety net under them whatsoever. It's amazing now that you've got grandkids doing what granddaddy used to do, and, and then you've got it's, it's on down the line. It's more than just one immediate family, the flying Walindas. Everything they do is depending on the balance that they have in their body. Today, I want you to pose this thought to you that everything in life is about balance. Life itself is about balance. When something is out of balance, there's always a price you pay. This will sound political, but I think it needs to be said in, in this time. This past week, we observed another anniversary of Roe v. Wade. In a Supreme Court decision that a woman has the right to choose, I pick my words carefully because they're women of the sound of my voice that have been through abortions. And I don't say this is critical, and, and God's taught me and had to show me that there's compassion, and people make decisions, and, and later on they realize they had bad advice, and, and they were in a situation that they thought was something they needed to do. That's not the point. The point I want to make tonight, today is this, is that when I think about life and balance, I believe our society is out of balance for some decades now. I believe today, the day we live, is human life is as cheap today as it's ever been. I don't say it started with Roe v. Wade, but I think that's added to it. And I think now, if you look around, everywhere you look, it seems to be the, uh, there seems to be an unbalance to life. If you don't believe that, then just get up early tomorrow and turn on the 5 o'clock news. You'll see imbalances. That somebody gets upset with somebody and they resolve it by taking a gun and shooting and killing and maiming someone else because life is cheap. We look in our world today of social media and more and more we see we've been desensitized to this kind of stuff. Killing innocent life and doing things and maiming other people is just part of society and it seems like it's more now than ever. And I believe the ultimate of that is we're out of balance when it comes to life. We need to realize this is the only life that we have. We need to realize, spiritually speaking, this is the only chance we get. There's no do-overs when it comes to our relationship with Jesus Christ. Life is cheap, and I believe life is out of balance. But when I think about balance, I think about creation. Creation is about balance. I've told you lately that I've just been, in fact, it's just been amazed by some of the things that I couldn't figure out in school way back there to be fascinated by how God's creation is always in balance. But I want you to understand, well, so Brother Jay, what happened? Sin came into the world and sin caused an unbalance in the world that we live in. God's creation was balanced. It was perfect. And man's sinning brought about the imbalances that we deal with today. Let me give you some just basic things about balance. There was a time a few years ago that uh, I was driving with my truck and all of a sudden my truck began to bounce. I mean, to a point, I'd look over at the passenger seat and it was just wobbling. And, and, and I realized I slowed down. I said, I'm not having a flat tire. My, mind's, my mind began to wander. I said, oh, I got a tire separating. And you know, those tire guys, they don't, and I got great friends here that are tire guys, but they don't want to put just one tire on your car. They want to put four for one. But, but I said, oh no, I, I, don't, I don't have the money to put new tires. And then my little limited mechanical person, I know about tie rods. I said, I bet I got a tie rod going out. I couldn't tell you where it is, but it just sounded good. I, I ain't got tie rod problems. And I was beginning to think, I got an axle that's bent. And I, I got a mechanic friend. I can imagine how many hundreds of dollars it was going to take to put another axle under my truck. I mean, I just went on and on with it. Finally, I go to a tire place and I take it in. And I'm just fearing them calling me, telling me what was wrong with it. And what was wrong with it is the weights on one of my tires had come off. And when I saw the weight that looked like a sinker that you would use to catfish was put on one tire and my vehicle was now balanced again, I realized afresh and anew there's something to this thing of balance. Dave Ramsey says in the financial world, if you'll live like no one else today, tomorrow you'll live like no one else. And what that means today in this world that we live in, there's a lot of imbalanced people financially. There's a lot more month than money. We got to have it. We think it's God's will for us to have it, and we have no way to pay for it. We get a coupon book hoping that everything will last for the next five, six, seven years, and most of the time depreciating things are doing exactly that. They're depreciating to the point that they don't work anymore. And yet we're so imbalanced. That there's so many things financially. 
And you think about it, we call this, it's something, it's of yesteryear because of online banking. But we used to balance our checkbooks. You remember those days? Now you look online to find out what your balance is. Isn't it amazing how we use these terms in our everyday vernacular, but we wonder what's really, what it's about. Learning to walk is all about balance. I remember my three doing that. I remember it really well. I remember amazed that they would just scoot across the floor and they would crawl and then the day came that they were unsatisfied with that. And then they would push up and hold up to things and hold on to things. And all of a sudden, for whatever, a balance took place on a given hour of a given day and they began to walk. Wasn't that a great day? Oh, it was a great day. Somebody defined that in parenting this way. The first two years of their life, you're, telling them to, you're teaching them how to walk and talk. And the next 16 years, you're telling them to sit down and shut up. But anyway, it works. There's a balance to life. Now, let me give you one more. There's also a balance to life in relationships. I share this a lot with couples. I share this a lot with people that their life is out of balance and they trust me and share with me and it's something I think about. I believe there are five relationships that you have in your life. And the first relationship we have is with God. Primarily, ultimate, our number one relationship is God Almighty. Our second one is our spouse. Third one is children. Fourth one is others. And the fifth one is me. And I tell this, if God is number one, spouse is number two, children number three, others are number four, and self is number five, any time a bigger number gets ahead of the numbers and ahead of it, in other words, if two gets ahead of one or four gets ahead of two, you're in trouble. It might not show up today, but eventually it'll get you. Now, I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm not male chauvinist when I say this. I'm not being sexist. But I can't tell you how many families that they had marital problems because little children came along and all of a sudden mama's attention then when she became a mama, her primary attention went to the kids and dad was left behind. And later on, they had to work that stuff out. I remember this saying of a famous person that I want to remind my kids of often that I brought you in this world. I can take you out of this world and with God's help, I can make another one somewhat like you. <laughs> you think about it. Many times in our relationships, we get out of whack. Men, this is for you. I know a lot of guys that run with their buddies when their wife's at home. Hmm? That's not what God called us to do. There's a place for me to have friends, but my friends should never replace the relationship I have with my wife and my kids. And on and on it goes. And all of those, if they're ahead of God, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Hmm, I got to move on. There's so much more I could say there. But it's all about balance. I got to balance my relationship with God, my relationship with Suzanne, my relationship with my kids, my relationship with others, and then the relationship I have with myself as well. It's about balance in our life. To highlight the word for you quickly, listen to this. We're in Colossians chapter number three. I challenge you this week, go break that chapter down. It's some good stuff now. If you want to live, if you want to know how to live the Christian life, Colossians three is a good chapter. You just do what Colossians three says and you'll be a great child of God, I guarantee you. It shows us that. And we read to you, the last verse we read today, verse number 17 says, in, in whatever you do, whether in word, think about it, in word or in deed, whatever comes out of my mouth or the way I conduct myself, it needs to be done in a way that brings glory and honor to God Almighty. Well, if we just do that, there'd be supreme balance in our life overnight. Then the word in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 you know that. It says to everything there is a season. You remember that one? There's a time to be born and a time to die. And there's a time to plant and there's a time to sow. You know, it's all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's time to, to, to reap. There's a time to sow. There's a time to reap. Listen, let me tell you this. We think about time. Everything that God does has a balance to it. Sometimes we struggle with that because we're mere finite people trying to understand an infinite God. But it works. There's balance. Psalm 5, verse 8. I shared this with my men on Friday at our, in the morning at our 6 o'clock morning meeting, my one verse. And it says this, Lord, lead me in your righteousness because of my adversaries. Make your way straight before me. You know what I think? Listen, it's just, just layman talk again. A lot of times we're thinking God's okay with fish tailing. You know what I'm talking about? We just slip and slide and we're like a pinball machine, the ball in the pinball machine. We're just all over the map. And we think, God's okay with that, Brother Jay. No, the psalmist said, Lord, make my way straight. You know, make my way in such a way, so it speaks volumes to me, that when people see me, they know which direction I'm going. You know anybody in their life, you wonder what you're going to get today? You know, God wants us to have a consistent balance in our life. 
that other people are consistently seeing the right in our life because we have that balance? One more, Philippians 4, 5 says, Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. The King James Version says moderation. In other words, God has called you and me to affect other people positively. <laughs> and we do that with balance in our life. A question, how balanced are you? How balanced are you on the inside? Right now as we speak, I always do the one to ten thing, one being the worst, ten being the best. How are you on the inside when it comes to balance? How are you on the outside? Is there a lot of turmoil? Is there a lot of issues? Is there a lot of relational issues? Are there are a lot of things you're dealing with that are overwhelming, you know, maybe even overcoming you. Back to the inside are those things that nobody knows about, but you fret about a lot. There's a lot of turmoil on the inside. As we talked about a few weeks ago, God desires for us to live in peace, not in anxiety. God moves us toward a tranquility in Him that He takes care of us. Sometimes He calms the storm, the song says. Other times He calms the child. How balanced are you? How balanced are you in other areas of your life? Directions and desires. Balance. I'm going to give you these quickly. I think about balance. Balance is achieved four, by four ways. Number one, it's achieved by preparation. I always stand that I think you're supposed to start the day early with the Lord. Um, I'm not a night person at all. Uh, last night, I'm not telling too much personal stuff. It wasn't, I just decided I was already sleepy, falling asleep in the chair about quarter after eight. I got up and went to bed at 8.30 last night. You know what? I'm officially middle-aged. I, I have to say, if that's, if that's a prerequisite, I'm there. You know what I'm talking about? But early with the Lord, I believe when I wake up, spend time with Him, and God, this is the day. It, it, it's, it's good morning, Lord, not good Lord, it's morning. You know, it's that kind of thing. Preparation. I believe if you, got, if you need balance in your life that you've got to prepare yourself, you've got to anticipate it. I believe it's something you've got to work at. I don't believe it just happens. I don't believe Mary Lou Retton, the first time she got on that balance beam, was a gold medal recipient. It was literally years of agonizing preparation to do what she did way back yonder. Listen, when we think about it, I think if you're going to be something, the more you got to work at it. The stronger you get, you work out, you do it. But I believe it applies in the spirit world too. We understand a lot of physical stuff, but we need to understand the spiritual part of balance too. Secondly, it's not only preparation, but it's perspiration too. When I think about that, I think about you got to work at it. You know, I think we need to understand this, that balance is accomplished by getting after it. That goes right along with the first one in preparation, but I want to add a little bit to it. And this is going to hurt. This is going to sting. But listen to me very carefully. I don't see one verse of Scripture where God likes sorriness. Not one. Not one verse do I see that God's okay with somebody that knows they should do better, knows that God wants more in their life, and they settle for less. Not one verse. I'll give you one example. It's the parable of the talents. And you can go read it. It's pretty unique. They were all given different levels of talent. That reminds me that we're not all the same. God's got different calling. He has different abilities. He even pours more on some than others, and it's not a popularity contest. God knows what part of the body we're in, and he knows what we need. That should be very liberating to everybody here. But what I do see in that is the one person who was fearful, the one person that was held accountable in the three that were giving talents was the one that was fearful and did nothing with what God gave them. Nothing. So what that speaks to me is whatever God gave you in life, whatever God has for you in life, he expects for you to live in balance with that. Not one of these that we, we're fearful so we do nothing. Oh, no, no. I don't think. God expects us to work at it. God does never adhere. God never blesses sorriness. Oh, listen, scared won't get it. Sorriness won't get it. The Word of God says a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Oh, I believe. I also believe in a sweat equity when it comes to this too. If you want balance in your life, you're going to sweat to get it. You know, if right now, guys, where you're sitting, that, uh, that, that belt is cutting a little deep, and you get tired of it cutting that way, it's going to, there's going to be some sweat involved to change it. Hmm? We want to get stronger, there's, there's a price to pay. I remember studying this years ago, and I was amazed. Literally, a muscle is broken down to get stronger. You know, my little finite mind, please don't amen that. In my little finite mind, I would think that the muscle when you work out, it would just build on it. But it actually tears it down to make it stronger. It's going to cost you something to get stronger. You want to be a great prayer? Then pray. 
Don't wait for God in heaven to give you something that he's never given anyone else. What I know about people that are great orators of the word, people that can quote scripture, on and on it goes. You know what I found out about them? They spend hours and hours and hours in the word, perspiring. They want more, so they do that. As I've told you before in this very thing, most overnight successes take about 15 years. The greatest at their craft are the ones that are in their craft constantly. Give you two more balances achieved by previous performance. You know, we did Bible characters for a whole year and just fascinated. I, I debated of whether to do a whole nother year of Bible characters. There's so many. But it was David who said about Goliath, I know God can give me you because he gave me the bear and he gave me the lion. Long before you, long before you big old giant, but long before you came into my life, God had already prepared me for you. And listen to me. Folks, God knows what he has for Lakeshore Church tomorrow. He knows what he has for you tomorrow. He knows what he has for every one of us tomorrow. And I believe with everything about me, this could very well be a sermon that God balances our life today because he knows the Goliath that's coming tomorrow. Balance, previous performance. You gain strength from previous exertion. Hmm? I believe this. Some of you might not know this, but I coach baseball. This year I'm coaching a ninth grade team. They're just a bundle of hormones every time you see them. I mean, if it's not acne, it's all this, and it's girls, and, uh, and I love it. It keeps me young somewhat. But uh, you know, th there's just some guys that, whether they're at the plate or whether they're in the field, maybe sometimes even as a team when the team's not that good, you know what you need? You need a win. You know what I'm talking about? I, I need a kid that I've worked with for hours on hitting and literally now before us and God, he couldn't hit a baseball with a boat paddle. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the wide part. And, and you're over there at third base and he's batting and, and you're just asking God, God, let him just, run. And, the, and the term is this, let him just run into one. And I've had kids when they run into one, they're the most surprised, you know. And what I'm saying is we need wins. Listen, I want to make a spiritual analogy here about balance now. Some of you under the sound of my voice, you need a win. Hmm? I'll tell you how you get a win. You ready? Look, you say, well, I don't know any scripture. Listen, go, go memorize John 3, 16 tomorrow. That's a win. Before the end of the week, go and get another one. John 3, 17 is a great verse too. Go memorize both of those in a week. When you come back next Sunday, you've got a win in your pocket. Huh? Far too many times, we're, we're children of God trying to win this life thing. We don't have any wins. When was the last time you had a win? Hmm? God's waiting to delve out wins, but we got to do our part. Because let me tell you something. He's not going to excite us in performance. No, if we're not preparing, if we're not perspiring, you get it now? You see where it works? Oh, we know God can. And the last one, but certainly not least, is this. Balance is achieved by perspective. Perspective sustains us. One of my favorite is God didn't bring me this far to let me go or let me down. You hear me say that a lot. It's original with me. He didn't bring me this far to let me down or let me go. If you're around me anytime at all and we're dealing with adversity, I'll say this to you. I'll say God knew this yesterday. Right now, looking around this sanctuary, there are two ladies here for the very first time since they've lost their husbands. I just want you to know my heart goes out to you. I don't take that lightly. There's a lady here, and the last time she was in church, I believe she lost her brother. Hmm. There was a man at 8.30 service this past week. He got a terminal cancer sentence on his life from a doctor. Hmm. Hear me say this, not just to those four, but through the hundreds that are here. He did not bring us this far to let us down or let us go. I don't know how he will do it. I might not know when he'll do it, but I do know that he will do it. Sometimes the old song says, sometimes he calms the storm. Other times he calms the child. I want to close this way today. I've had ear trouble. My left ear, uh, I, I've had doctors now. I've had ear, nose, and throat doctors look in my ear and go, man, and walk around to the other ear just to see if the other one looks like that. Had major ear surgery back in 95. I mean, I just grew up. I mean, I had some major stuff. But with all that ear trouble, let me tell you something. About six times in my life, I've had vertigo so bad I couldn't stand up. And, and what's really great is I had some friends around me a couple of times when it happened, and they ended up laughing at me. I mean, that's when you really know you got a great friend that will laugh at your misery. <laughs> and what I know about vertigo, when it really kicks in, you talk about out of balance. 
I know what it's like to physically be imbalanced. I really do. I mean, I, I don't even like thinking about it because I can remember some of it. I, I know what it's like. But the point I want to make is this. I wonder how many people the picture of God or the picture that God sees about their spiritual life is what I look like physically. We're all over the map. Very little consistency in our life. Everything is spinning. But the point I want to make today is God sees our imbalances spiritually. I'm not going to, I don't want to overwhelm you. I didn't share this at 830. It comes to mind now, but God's assuring me on many different levels. He's got great plans for Lakeshore Church. But let me tell you, I don't want to hurt anybody, but you need to receive this, and I do too. He's not going to trust it to imbalanced people. And what I want to do before we have our prayer time today is I, I want to help you achieve balance in your life, okay? And what I mean by that is just, okay, here's some bottom line. Brother Jay, if I realize I'm out of balance in some department of my life, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally, whether it's spiritually, whatever, how do I, how do I change? Okay? Here it is. Number one is this. You've got to acknowledge it. It's never going to happen unless you acknowledge it. It's never going to happen. Let me tell you something. You're never going to change and you're never going to have balance in your life if somebody else is always telling you you need it. You with me? Including the preacher. Never going to happen. You know? People call it the bottom. People call it whatever. But you're never going to have balance in your life unless you acknowledge the need. Secondly, you've got to do this. You've got to ask God to help us. God, you've got to show it to me. I always say one of my favorites, I've got plenty of them, but for this point, my favorite one is Isaiah 6. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train filled the temple, and it gave great depiction of what God looked like. And then immediately it said that he saw himself. Immediately when he saw God correctly, then he saw himself. And you know what? It says he had his need met there. And then at the end of that, Isaiah says, Lord, here am I, send me. Radical difference when... God gets involved in our life. We've got to ask God to help us. If we don't act on what we know, it will never, ever happen. Never, ever. We want something and we're not willing to act on it. It's never going to happen. And let me tell you something. And we wonder why the world's getting bigger. The effect of the world's getting bigger and the effect of the church is getting smaller. It's because we're not willing to pay the price to be difference makers. You know what I know about my balance? My balance for yesterday was for yesterday. I have to assess my balance today. That's the reason that I gotta prepare myself. That's the reason I gotta get up early with the Lord, Daniel. That's the reason we gotta, we gotta have what God wants, His grace for us today. I gotta assess it. How do I achieve balance in my life? God's done some great things, but I gotta re-up today because our life is ever changing. Hmm? I know that by the authority of who God is, I've been speaking my heart and I'm a nobody, please. I'm just a person trying to be in balance today with God. Are you with me now? I'm here to tell you that God in heaven says, come unto me, all you that are heavy and heavy laden, and I will give you.